Hi there and welcome. My name's Gail Porter and you're watching Careers TV, our sneak peek into Britain's 21st century job market. Today's programme is the third instalment in our series on careers in science, in which we'll be visiting companies from across the UK scientific industries and asking them to tell you, the viewer, a little bit about what they do. We'll start off today's episode with a little lesson in etymology. That's the study of the history of words. The English word science is a direct derivation from the old French word science, which in turn comes from the Latin word skiens. The present participle of the verb skire, meaning to know, you still with me? Good, because I'm not done teaching yet. In the Middle Ages, the word science was used to mean any systematic recorded knowledge, which kind of covers, well, everything that was written down, from philosophy to the study of languages. Science as we know it today started to emerge in the 1600s. In fact, many historians trace it back to a single year, 1543. 1543 was the year that Andreas Versalius published his groundbreaking study of anatomy, the Humani Corporis Fabrica, the fabric of the human body. And astronomer Nicholas Copernicus brought out De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelestium, on the revolution of the celestial spheres, in which he was the first to present a case for the planets revolving around the sun and not vice versa. So, a good year for science, bad year for the now famous other Boleyn girl, because she died. From the 1500s, when the only real careers in science involved leeches, alchemy or being branded a heretic, things have changed a whole lot for those of a scientific bent. From the locomotive to the light bulb, the internal combustion engine to the desktop computer. The world is no longer wary of science, but led by it. But that still begs the question, why choose a career in science? Well, the 21st century is going to be the innovation century. And if you want to be part of that innovation and that moving forward, then science is the way to be part of that. But also, being a scientist will help you, um, give you the opportunity to apply science to tackling the world's biggest issues, world hunger, climate change, food security, um, transport issues, and there is everything for scientists to do. The lovely thing about this industry is that you can move sideways, so we've got lots of people for whom the laboratory was a start place, then they go into sales, then they go into technical service. There's a lot of mobility about the business. The industry offers so many different types of job at all sorts of levels. The interest is going to be dependent on the previous training and qualifications. If you've done science at school, one thing. If you're a chemistry graduate, that's another. But the industry has places for all those people. And it's a fascinating industry to work for. The products are products which actually enhance our living environment. And so working to produce better products in that respect is so satisfying. I chose a career in chemistry. I think I always had an aptitude for it because when I was at school, I chose maths and sciences as my options but I had an absolutely brilliant chemistry teacher and his passion for the subject and his, the way he encouraged creative thinking got me hooked really. So after that I didn't take the typical A-level route, I, I went straight into employment and I um, did an ONC and a HNC part time while I was working as a trainee. After that I joined this company as, um, as a technician. A stereotypical view of a scientist is someone who's going to be stuck in an office or a lab, that's just not the case. Um, I spend much of my time dealing with uh, the earth and the outside on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, what, what I deal with is um, it's the soil and the structure of the earth around us. You know, when you can't do that from an office, you've got to get out and get your hands dirty, which is great. When I was very, very young, I've always been interested in sort of how things work, um, you know, sort of done Lego and things like that. And uh, when I was at school, I had a very good design technology teacher who sort of spotted that in me and thought that I might make quite a good engineer. What uh, made me become a chemical engineer and uh, work in the chemical industry was that uh, even from school, uh, I enjoyed chemistry and had a fascination with it, but I also enjoyed working with my hands in doing practical things, solving problems and designing things. So I started looking at a career in engineering and then I realised that there was this branch of engineering called chemical engineering, uh, whose um, practitioners work in the chemical industry. So uh, I went off to university and did a degree in chemical engineering and uh, here I am. Science has really shaped the whole world that we live in. You know, it's shaped everything about us, all of this, all this, this glass, this floor, this light, 
even this cardi, this zip, all developed through science and technology. So um, it's, it's quite satisfying to kind of be part of the next, how the world will be built in the next 50 to 100 years. Well, the Leach report in 2005 identified that we need perhaps 400,000 more people with science qualifications in the UK. And this is partly to compete in the global economy. The UK government has said that we need to be a knowledge-based, skills-based economy to add value to products, and that is really developing science and technology and innovation. So we need more people familiar with that. Now that's why our interviewees have chosen to go into their careers in science. It's all well and good deciding what you want to do for a living, but is it really you that makes a decision on whether or not you're employed? Well, unless you're going into the family business or manage to pull off ye old Jedi mind trick in your interview, the ultimate decision on your employment rests with the recruiter. So what kind of qualities might he or she be looking for? Qualities you need, obviously maths is a good grounding. It seems to crop up in, in everything that I do. I thought I'd forgotten it a long time ago, but uh, back to the maths, GCSE and A level set me in good stead. And, and even the basic science of GCSE uh, and further science at A level, physics and chemistry, um, always seems to crop up when you think you're never going to use it again. It's surprising how often I find myself regretting throwing away my uh, GCSE notes. Well, one of the things that often isn't promoted and what we're trying to do is to say you also need the soft skills as well because often or not what's forgotten is mathematicians, scientists are changing the world but they don't do it on their own, they do it when working in teams so they need to know how to communicate, how to work together in teams so being a scientist and a mathematician is not just about uh, knowing the hard skills and engaging with your brain. It's also about engaging with your heart as well and connecting with the problem you're trying to solve. So empathy skills, having an understanding of the problem. So it's uh, a good mathematician and a scientist has always got the right balance between heart and mind. The best people to join the industry are people who've enjoyed science but maybe aren't necessarily right at the top end of the mathematics end of science. They feel practical uses of what they want to do. They understand chemistry, they understand physics and they also understand environmental things. So if you really enjoy your science and technology course then you really will enjoy working in this industry. The ability to work within teams and in many instances lead those teams is, is really important. The key qualities that we look for in a successful candidate and to buy Biotech would be um, someone that's strong-willed, uh, you know, got a, a mind of their own and will get up and, and do things essentially. They're not um, people that just expect to be told what to do. Um, we just like people that get up and, and get on with it and take part and they've got to be a, team, a real team player here. One of the things you need as a, as a, as a researcher is to be able to see around a problem. You've got to have a wide angle lens to be able to see, to capture everything. And if you've only spent your entire life sitting inside um, one particular environment, uh, you're unlikely to have that sort of peripheral view that gives you those, the, the opportunity for those sort of alternative views of perspective of, of a problem. A career in the chemical industry at a graduate level will involve maybe chemistry, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. Um, those Certainly the engineering traits, are, the engineering competencies are all very transferable from industry to industry. They don't just, we don't, don't just learn um, the pure science, it's an applied science and it's a way of working. So, with regard to team working, which are items such as project management is learned, problem solving, um, other areas of work that you learn in industry that are transferable from one career to another. So, so it is a, a very transferable uh, set of skills that you learn in the, in the industry. You need to be able to work to deadlines. So it is important that you can get your work done when it's due. But also attention to detail is very important, especially in the quality side of things.